Our first guest this week is a comedian and actor whose hit theatre show has been turned into a brand new BBC drama. Wait. Can you see it through my trousers? Has it? It has. It's definitely gotten bigger. Shit. I'm gonna have to sort it myself. I can try squeezing it. Freezing it. Ooh. Holy water. Ladies and please welcome my guest, Michael Patrick! <laughs> so, that wasn't you. No. <laughs> what gave it away? Um, everything. <laughs> but the show is called My Left Nut. Yes. And it's based upon your life story. Yes. And it's now been turned into a show on BBC. Yes. So what happened? So, yeah, as I said, the show's called My Left Knot, uh, based on my experience as a teenager. When I was 15, I discovered lump on my testicle, and I didn't tell anyone for three years. Yeah. Which and is such a bloke thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. Just to go, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll yeah. just ignore it. Uh, it'll, it'll go away on its own. It'll be grand. And by the time I did tell someone, it had grown to the size of a can of Coke. Aye. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, imagine carrying a can of coke around in your pocket at all times. And How was that? Were, were there sort of suspicions? Yeah, oh, so for a while it was quite small, it was grand, but towards the end, like, you could definitely see it through my trousers. Yeah. And there was a lot of rumours going around school yeah. that I was rather well endowed. Yeah. <laughs> which, obviously, as a teenager, I'm like, all right, well, that's a pretty decent rumour to be going around, so... <laughs> All right. What but, a um, weird energy to be carrying. So presumably yeah. you're thinking, I'm, I'm dying. Yeah. This is something terrible. But mm -hmm. the girls think I've got a big dick. <laughs> <laughs> like, and as a teenager, like, do you know that balances? Exactly and, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's... It was scary and it was terrifying, but it also ended up in kind of some funny situations because of it. So yeah. we, you know, we wanted to share that. And... Well, that's what's so interesting about the show, that it is horrific and yet really funny. Yeah, well, it's a show about teenage boys and balls. Mm. Like, you know, that's... <laughs> but it's teenage that's funny, boys, like... Teenage boys, balls and fear. Yeah. And love. Yeah. All kind of wrapped up together. Yeah, and family as well, and love and friendship and all that as well. Um, I think the reason I didn't tell anyone really was a couple of reasons. So my dad passed away when I was eight years old. Right. Of motor neuron disease. Right. And obviously that means the only parent I've got in the house is my ma. Yeah. And who wants to go to their ma yeah. about their testicles, for one? Second thing, obviously, subconsciously, I'm worried that, you know, I saw my dad go through something. Yeah. I don't want to go through that, so then that's the whole thing that I'm like, I don't, I just want to ignore that. So those are the things that are sort of swirling around in my head. And was the there, th there was n nobody that you know, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think, yeah. like a teacher or something like that? Or I mean, you would you go to your teacher? No, about right, man, the, I'm just, like, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean... Theoretically, that you, we should all feel comfortable, and yeah. you should feel comfortable with your but teachers. Who does? And, but who does? You know, yeah. it's hard. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I look back now, and I'm like, you're, you're an idiot. You're a fool. Go yeah. to the doctors. Go to the doctors. But as well, at that age as well, you know, when it first happened at 15, you're sort of like, is that supposed to be there? Maybe, yeah. maybe that's just they're growing in a weird rate, and, and then the other one's going to catch up eventually. You know. And to clear up, what was it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So it was a hydra seal, which is just essentially a build-up of fluid. Right. That's all it is. So there was, it wasn't cancerous, it was nothing? No, it was just a big load of liquid. That's so, all it was. Like. So you just had, like, a, one massive liquidy ball? Yeah. <laughs> like a big water balloon, like. And like, well, that's the thing, because it wasn't sore, really, because that kind of cushions it. It's like you've got, like, a nice sort of protective layer around it. Yeah. So I wasn't feeling any pain, so I was like, maybe this is all right. Right. So, yeah, it was, it was a very strange time, but at the same time, there was nights where I would cry myself to sleep about it, yeah. and I'd be like, I should tell someone or I should do something, but I was just that, you know, that much of a, you know, typical lad, typical teenager, 
you know, I have a very loving family. I've got very close friends, yeah. but I still didn't feel comfortable to... Was well, it never kind of like, I'm trying to think, like a moment in PE where, you know, you're in, <laughs> you're in the showers and yeah. you, someone's like, whoa, man! <laughs> I tried to hide it as much as possible. Like, that was the whole thing, awkwardly, sort of trying to get changed behind a towel. But there was one moment where, obviously, you had the sort of classic, really short PE shorts, and I didn't have the most supportive underwear on. Yeah. And we were doing this thing where we're sprinting and the fella behind you had to try and catch up with you. And they slipped out. Yeah. And your man's reaching for me to try and grab me and just sees these, this pair fall out. And oh, and sort of, he cringes back in horror. Yeah. Thankfully, he was, he was so traumatized he didn't tell anyone. So he uh, <laughs> managed to keep it secret for a bit longer. So when did you finally decide to tell somebody? Eventually, it just got, it got so big. And it wasn't like there wasn't a single moment where it was no, I have to tell someone. It was yeah. sort of a gradual process. And eventually, at first, I told my mum. When I went down, I was like, Mum, I need to go to the doctor. He says, why? I says, well, because I've got a, a swelling in my testicle. And like a classic Irish mother, she went, oh, right, Grant, yes, yes, that's fine. Uh, we'll get that, we'll, we'll get that fixed. <clears throat> and I uh, went to the doctors, and because of the sheer size of it, like, we got rushed through everything. Yeah. Which then makes you worry. Yeah. even more because you're like, you know, it's the NHS and they're amazing, but there's waiting lists, you know? So they got me in for ultrasound like a couple of days after and on a Saturday. But it's not a doctor doing the ultrasound, it's like a, it's a technician. Yeah. So I'm sitting to the technician, can you tell me what's wrong? And he says, no, no, I just do the scan and then t pass this on to the doctor. Yeah. And I'm like, but you, come on, you have to tell me something. And he's like, no, because he doesn't, he's, you know, not qualified or whatever to, um, to say that. Yeah. And then it was my mate's 18th birthday party that night and he had a free gaff, big house party, parents were away, and I'm sitting there with this feeling of, I've got something wrong with me, I've yeah. tried to get it fixed, I still don't know what it is, and I ended up uh, drinking, you know, two, three litre bottles of cider, vomiting on his front garden and telling the whole party I had cancer. Uh. Which, uh, in retrospect, probably wasn't the best way to deal with it. <laughs> and what kind is... of ruined my mate's 18th birthday, so I just want to take this opportunity to apologise to my friend on television for ruining his birthday. I think you're all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> did you do any of those things in that clip? Did you try I those? I didn't do the deep heat. Yeah. But I thought about it. I, I think I lifted a tin and was like, do you know what, that's even, even too far. Yeah, but you actually poured holy water on your balls. Well, I didn't pour the thing in. It was more of a, like, a, you're reaching for the holy water anyway, and then you just sort of... <laughs> yeah, we did this bit. Yeah. So, how was it treated in the end? There's two options with that, I was told. Um, they can either insert a needle. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it sort of drains out. You know. But, but the issue with that is that it, the swelling might come back. Yes. In which case I'd have to needle it again. Uh-huh. And again. Yeah. And again. No. Every time it comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I decided not to go for that one. Correct. Uh, and the other option is surgery. So they yes. go in and they have surgery. <laughs> but I was under general anesthetic then, so that was fine. Exactly, you can't yeah. feel it. You can't thing. feel it. And, Fuck yeah. um, Who in their right mind is going for the first one? <laughs> I do not know. You'd be, uh, yeah. Would you like to just... So we can put you under and you won't feel a thing and we'll yeah. do a procedure and your test will be back to a normal size. Or we can stab at you... <laughs> ..with a sewing machine. <laughs> and you have to go back every year for the pleasure of it again. Yeah. Yeah. So you just woke up? I woke up and it was all fine. Just had to wait for the stitches to heal and everything's all, all good now. Amazing. Yeah. So what made you go from that kind of trauma yeah. and then go... I'm going to turn this into a stage show. Yes, yeah, so it was a stage show originally that I wrote with my writing partner, Oshin Kearney. Yeah. Um, I says, Oshin, I've got an idea. We're going to put on a show. And then we just got, had a few pints because I didn't have any good ideas. Had a few pints and I started saying, telling him, he already knew the story, he's a friend of mine from uni. Yeah. And I says, you remember the time I had the big ball? God, that was mad, wasn't it? Oh, that was, I can't believe I didn't tell anyone. And he just turns to me and goes, you write that play. I says, Oshin, no one's gone want to hear me talk about my testicles. <laughs> and for the past three years, I've done nothing but talk yeah. about my testicles. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it was at the Edinburgh Festival. It was a massive hit. How did your family react when they saw it? <laughs> not, not your bull, but yeah. the... <laughs> but the, 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 the stage the play, play yes. Yeah, so the stage play is quite, you know, it's quite energetic. It's quite fun. I, I play myself in it and play my mum and all this. And there were certain stage directions. It's a play about testicles as a teenager. Yeah. There's a stage direction in it where it says, says Mick masturbates, that's, that's in the play. And I wrote the play on like a, a weekend, like a writer's retreat with other writers and things like that. 
and they were all saying, oh, your mum's going to love it. They had heard the draft. Your mum's going to adore it. Oh, it's like, it's a love letter to your mum. It's a love letter to you, like thanking your dad and your mum and everything. It's so sweet. It's so lovely. And I sat down and I read it for her. And she didn't speak to me for a week. Oh. And I thought, oh, you know, you're not happy with the portrayal. You're not happy with like how I'm representing you and dad and all. She just goes, you're not doing that filth on any stage. <laughs> Because of the stage direction, yeah. Michael masturbates. Yeah, and yeah. I says, but it's all about you and how much whoa, I love whoa, you. Whoa, whoa, don't say like that. <laughs> don't say <like> that. <laughs> no, it's not a, it's not a thing with that. Yeah. It's about you, it's thanking you and all. And she goes, I didn't hear a word after you said that stage direction. Right. So, but no, and then afterwards, you know, she came to see the play. Did she? I think she's seen it about, you know, we've done the show over a hundred times now. Oh, wow. We might bring it back after the TV show. But she must Airs. be so immensely proud now. I imagine yeah. now when she's watching you, when you're masturbating, I bet she's <laughs> <laughs> sat there really like, I'm really happy. <laughs> no, she still closes her eyes. Does um, she? I mean, she's, I think well, she's that's probably the play, for the best. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's a TV show. Nice TV show, yeah, which is, is crazy again. Um, and it's going to be on BBC Three in the iPlayer. Yeah, so it's not out yet, but it'll be out very soon. I think what's great about a story like this, hopefully, it's if there's anyone in a similar situation, it yeah. inspires them to go, right, I'm going to go to the hospital to the doctors so they don't go through that three years. Three years, of yeah. Fear. Of fear. And that's really something we're really proud of. Yeah. It wasn't something that we intended. We were just like, we're going to write this play about my balls, and that'll be funny. Yeah, but that's but, it. But, it, yeah. but it's but, really funny, but really kind of educational. And in, in, yeah. in, in, you know, there's a better way of putting this, but in a non wanky way. <laughs> because, but yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly it, right. it's, yeah. it's sort of a, it's every day, and it's exactly, you swatch it on, you kind of go, oh, you know, everyone will you know, have a little feel of their balls yeah. <laughs> and go, no, but, no, but, you know and, but no, but the number of men who've come up to us after the play, when we've toured around Ireland or Edinburgh, wherever, have come up to us and said, do you know what, I actually had a, had a thing like that, I didn't tell anyone, yeah. I didn't tell anyone, and they were like, I'm going straight to the doctors Exactly, and, yeah. And that really, is, that's amazing, like, that's it's, not something yeah. we were intending, but it's so, makes me so happy, you know. It's brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Michael Patrick. <laughs>